go. All right. You are? Oh. Okay, hold on, y'all. I got two. Uh. Oh, we can fix this. We can do this. Okay. Um, hey, everybody. Um, there you are. Okay, this one. Um, <laughs> I really wanted... I, I've been watching some of these videos, and I'm really sorry. I have such a bad habit of looking at the wrong camera or not looking at the camera at all. So tonight, I'm trying to engage the camera with you and, and uh <laughs> give you the full... There we go. Let me... There we go. Okay. That's almost perfect. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so let me settle down here. Um, welcome, Rachel, Jackie, Jennifer, uh, Anne, of course. Um, speaking of Anne, um, Anne is going to uh, do a little guest teach uh, for us coming up here um, sort of soon. And um, let's see. Yes. Okay. All right. It doesn't switch. Actually. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. There she is. So Anne will be teaching a class. Um, I'm imagining Anne. You don't know what it is yet. Uh, you don't really need to know. But uh, Anne will be guest teaching. Uh, maybe she'll teach some moves that I don't teach or something like that. Um, we, uh, I had mentioned last week, um, uh, someone wrote a great letter about asking, is there a way we can zoom and stuff like that. And I tried to explain that on Monday's class. So you can watch the class if you want to, um, check that out. Mostly, basically what it comes down to is, um, it's hard to, it, I like being on the major, uh, sort of streaming networks of Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, um, because of discovery. And I don't have the uh, internet bandwidth out here in rural <laughs> or in the country to uh, stream to both Zoom and to those other sites. And so that's why I don't do uh, Zoom classes. I have done a Zoom wall, which is when I put everybody back on the green screen. It's it's pretty fun. It's not great because every it's about a 20 second delay for some reason, but um, that's about the best I can do, but I just want to keep offering to people if you're watching this and you want to join and you have a zoom account and you want to uh, beam this feed into a zoom room or create a Facebook uh, watch group or anything like that um, That's go for it and I can understand why you'd want to see each other uh, if I had the internet you I mean if I had the capacity I would totally uh, figure out how to incorporate that more so uh, hey Carla Okay, and um I don't know. Maybe we should explore wedgies again. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um, before we get into this, I've got a few things that I want to work on tonight. I, I, I'll tell you personally, I am in the middle of what I call a contraction day. And it's like your energy, you know, you, every time you teach, every time you care uh, for something, every time you um, take anything, <laughs> you know, like... Um, like you want to do well in something you expand your energy field according to my friend laurie and so it takes like it takes physical effort for you to push that out um like creation takes effort right and um you know and basically the idea is that's expansion and then contraction is like like that sort of that energy being allowed to come back home to you so it's like put out but then it's allowed to return to you and and Sometimes if, if you don't give yourself, according to her theory, like, and you know, I, I adopted this, that if you don't give yourself enough downtime, um, that eventually, uh, you know, your body will shut down either health wise or emotionally or something. And it'll just say like, look, stop, you need to let this energy come back. I call those contraction days. So, um, oh, nice to see you, Amy. And so I'm kind of having a contraction day. I have taught for, since... 2005 so I've taught on a lot of contraction days and I can have great classes while doing it but I need more of a flow type class um, to for me to really get into it so what we're gonna do tonight is, is called uh, guided flow I'll give you a technique like shoulder hooping and then you'll do that and then I'll be giving you instructional since this is a Thursday night I'll be offering a few instructions and tidbits if you have a request for a type of move super slow fundamentals okay Anne's already made one request Slow fundamentals. All right, so if you have any requests, we're on about a nine second delay between us, so you can make those requests and we'll hit them. We're gonna sway the same. 
I'm about to crack a can of soda water. <laughs> okay, yeah, frying pan cam looks pretty good. <laughs> if you guys could see behind the scenes on how we rig all this up, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Okay, sorry again for the late start, but we're going to get going. We're actually not, for us, we're really not that far behind schedule, so hopefully we'll get a nice 40 or 50 minute. Actually, I think before we jump into that... Oh, my co-star just left the floor. <laughs> um, before we get too far into this, Seltzer Club, that's right. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and start our... Ooh, well, that does not look good. We're going to go ahead and start our sway now, and we're going to start off with a very short, silent sway. And we're going to, I'm, in, I'm inviting you, I hope that you will, join me in hearing yourself breathe. And so it's not so much about taking bigger breaths than you would, although you could do that. It's just about hearing yourself breathe, like letting that be the noise that you hear. It doesn't really even have to change the rhythm of your breathing or how deeply you feel it. Just making it slightly audible. The goal of tonight will be to flow within a technique and we're going to bounce from one technique to another. We're starting with silent movement so that we can totally reset all of our filters. So that we can bring everything back up to the defaults. Audible breath in. my friend Lori had finally explained her thoughts on this expansion and contraction idea of our energy fields. I asked her, well, how do I let myself contract? And she said, well, in your case, you can do whatever you want to do, except don't create anything. Don't make anything. Don't even write an idea down. someone whose job or role in life requires that you have to expand that field you have to like to teach is to expand the field to care for people to care 
for a whole room of people it means you expand that field out to include all of those people. Raising a family of any size is an example of expansion. And Lori told me that if we don't take the time to contract, that the energy will come home, but it may slam into us on the way back. And that it was preferable Take time for yourself to allow that energy to return. So you could feel you at 100% audible breath in. a pretty short sway for us so we're going to move actually I think we'll go ahead and move into so we'll go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and play the song and I'm going to give you the option to keep moving in sway or to move into point technique and I'll explain what those are if you don't know I'm kind of ready to pick up my hoop so I'm going to go ahead and move into point technique wow that is so Crazy bright. Nice jumper. If you don't mind, I'll share just a few more things that Lori said as we explore slow motion flow. And the pace of our slow motion will be really de just determined by you. Lori warned me that that energy, which is me, it's me, it's my essence, that wants to return to home base, that both home base and that expanded energy miss each other. And they can't wait to be together again. And the danger was if I didn't give myself time to contract, that everyone that I met that day, everyone I dealt with was in the way of this reunion. They were in the way of me letting my expanded energy come home and make me feel whole. And that was the first time I really understood that sometimes the greatest gift you can give to others is your own alone time, if that's what you need your own space even if you're not alone it's yours so we're doing slow motion flow for our first exercise
home sign for that energy returning. Good. What about you, Tara? Do you like slow motion or is it drag? Tara says she likes it. Okay. <sighs> wow, there's so many different places I could go. This is when I wish we had a room. <laughs> uh, like, you know what I mean? Like a uh, shared hoop room. <laughs> um, okay. Man, I'm kind of digging this warrior stuff, so I think I'm going to stay here just a second longer. Okay, here we go. Okay, so for our next exercise, I'm going to invite you to try two point. Well, okay. I want you, I'm going to. I'm going to invite you to try two points on the hoop at the same time. and flowing with that. But you don't have to do two-point technique as we always do it. I could be holding the hoop in an open samurai like I'm doing right now, where the hoop's coming between my fingers. I could be in a full samurai, just straight up grip with the hoop. But when I am in need of a contraction day, when it's gotten to the point that I need one, I feel so disconnected from pretty much everything. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to move with our hoops, explore, but trying to keep two points of contact on it as a way of connecting the two sides. Now with that being said, the two points don't have to be your hands. I could be holding the hoop holding the hoop with one hand and have the other. Sweet, Rita, thanks for stopping in. And two points of contact, whether they're in your hands or one of those points, you know, you can just imagine anything. But that combined with slow flow, like we're doing right now, be super fun because it allows your hands to start figuring out their own transitions. Samurai grip, of course, is your level of control. That's what makes grip so awesome. Two point with your hands in point, it's a different type of feel with its own nuance and beauty.
with. It's all having a point of contact and a push one way or the other. Wherever the hoop is hanging is a point of contact. The push creates movement. The push hand can then become the pivot hand. And they just kind of have this nice dance back and forth with each other. space that feels safe to you and you haven't done it already and you can let your guard down it's cool to just add a couple of like you know emphatic breaths to your movement make a noise your cat will think you're crazy apparently. Sorry about that, bud. like the slow flow? Is it going to bum you out if we pick it up a little bit? Okay. All right. Well, we are going to pick it up. Hopefully you guys are having fun with us. I think I mentioned it, Rita, if you didn't hear me. Thank you for stopping in. I love it when people stop in and say like, I can't take class, but thanks for, it just feels so awesome. Um, okay. So we're going to, uh, Kind of mix things up a little bit. I hope this isn't too much of a of a jump and a switch, but we're going to. Um, I forgot to. Oh, there we go. Um, we're going to move it onto the core now, and we're going to do at least one core exercise. Core hooping exercise. Boom, 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 boom. And I'll go ahead and bring some music up. All right. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Tonight's technique, or this, this next technique, is called two birds. And all that it means is that you know what's going on with your two hands. That's it. That's all. If I'm in prayer position here, then I know what my hands are doing. The goal is to keep the hands awake and what my Dan called in flight. But flight doesn't, you know, you could keep them perfectly still. You could, you know, flight means awareness of their movement, awareness of their existence. Now you can two bird hoop anywhere you want to on the body. This is going to be a core hooping exercise. So it's a little bit harder, but I can kind of two bird underneath and shoulders. I could definitely two bird on the head, that's obvious. But I invite you just to try the waist. Like we're talking about this, you know, badass 80 year old that we're all gonna be, 90 year old. Anywhere 
The hoop can be in the hoop can be anywhere on the body. on my hands, that's my two birds. two birds <laughs> or wrist weights or just holding dumbbells or something like that you don't want to use too high a weight but uh, I really enjoyed it and it really sort of helped me feel and I remember lots of like sort of dumbbell flow <laughs> so, Tara said it would be need to be very light like one pound is two birds up here at the shoulders. If you're struggling with your shoulder hooping, two birds can help you actually. birds up at the head. Okay. I don't think anybody has made a request. And I think I hit Anne's slow stuff requests. So um, I'm kind of thinking maybe we should just move into shoulders since we were just talking about it and do one, one kind of shoulder flowy type song. Uh, and uh, I think that's what we'll do. We'll do a shoulders only song. And uh, but it's going to be kind of a different beat than what we're used to. Well, what would you prefer? Would you prefer an upbeat for a shoulders only song or kind of a medium? What do you say? Upbeat's fine. Let's do an upbeat shoulder song. Let's just go ahead and, and do this. And I'll be uh, shouting out pointers to you as we go. Okay. Advice on shoulder hooping. Think about, let's go back to this expansion contraction idea. If you think about expanding this circular or this like swirling vortexy like flow out of you, expanding from you, but also coming back to you, I don't know if this is going to help at all. It helps if you, I don't know, it's helping me. But, you know, I'm pushing it out. But where your shoulder hooping will start to rock is if you pull it back in too, right? This is me pushing it out, and then this is me, that beats easy to pull it back in on. I think you, 
it's easy to learn it when you have a big hoop because you can feel the push and pull, but with the small hoops, it's a little bit harder, right? But, you know, if you really want to, if you haven't already, play with pulling back on the hoop, right? In your shoulder hooping, instead of always pushing it forward. And remember, there's no right or wrong, right? But there's multiple ways up the same mountain, right? Some of you might need to pull back. Some of you actually might need to push forward. If you haven't been shoulder hooping that long, I'm willing to bet money that you're pushing one shoulder forward. And that's the problem. You're pushing it forward instead of having them both flat. The shoulder's flat. My shoulder's flat right now. Oh, there we go. Okay. This is me pushing the shoulder forward. And there's no right or wrong to this, but if one shoulder is always stuck forward, do you see how that's kind of effing up the whole rhythm there? But if I can unlock that shoulder and push it back even, this is this hand here, push that back instead of it being forward and back. You see the speed that happens from my hoop? So this is, this is locked and my hoop, you can't see it, but my hoop is dropping. But if I come back here, it seems to be dropping. And see if I come, if I widen up, push the shoulders apart. Nice tea. Alright, fast hooping shoulders. this with me you can we've got about a minute left here if you want to try some angles at the shoulders right fast music can really help but bring <laughs> bring some bounce to it boom, 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 boom. and you'll create an angle so I'm shoulder hooping I'm going really fast any bounce I put on see the hoop will start well you know intentional bounce right like lean back or push down here, I want to go up, then I'll just, you know, lean back and jump a couple of times, boom. All right. Now to bring it back down, I'm going to go back into a rhythm that creates horizontal lake. This is called lake. It creates that horizontal. And then we'll bounce again. Thank you, Luna. I knew what you meant. Sweet. All right, so that was pretty. That was pretty upbeat there. <sighs> All right. People wearing headphones. I am so effing sorry. <laughs> that sucks. I'm really sorry. I'll try to. If I put this on replay, I'll try to warn people about that. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, so uh, for our next exercise, our next flow uh, session, we're just going to say vertical. Mini breakthrough. Sweet, sweet. I wonder if that means you had a breakthrough with minis or it was a step in a much larger breakthrough. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. I'm glad I didn't kill you guys. Sorry. I'm supposed to have it. Anyway, I'm supposed to have it set that uh, I really want to start looking at the right camera here. Okay. So we're going to just keep it vertical. I'm not going to talk too much because I want to just keep flowing here. This is, a, this is a song I fell in love with for about a year. You guys have heard this. I could not stop playing it. But I think it's pretty fun for vertical movement. And for me, you know, this is like, you know, I already shared with you guys, this is kind of a contraction class for me. Like, I mean, it's kind of like, I'm trying to do things that let my energy come in. 
so I'm pretty patient with myself right now in this in this headspace, and so I can just sort of feel the massage of the hoop rolling around. I could try to like see if I could bring it up closer on the arm. I could see if I could you know do stuff like this. So I kind of feel this like sort of just fun, safe exploration of vertical rolling. Anti-spin releases of the hoop can be really fun. You know, it's just a quick jerk back into anti-spin and it's lots of spin on the hoop. And the more spin you have, if you're if you are trying to juggle your tosses, the more spin, the easier it is to do. Just vertical hooping, anything vertical. needs an explanation of that. If you think of your hoop, every time you toss it, if you think of it as a spinning tire, you know, uh, it'll really change the way you engage it. A lot of people don't, uh, maybe don't. Let's just wait a second. Yeah, if you want to like really smooth out, right, your, um, your tosses, then you just become aware of the spin of the hoop and you engage the hoop and you release the hoop. Engage and disengage the hoop, trying to maintain that spin. If that's, you know, if I'm trying to do what I'm doing right now and just go from toss to toss to toss. Because once I, once I, my brain finally, you know, sees the hoop as this rolling, spinning thing, then it's used to seeing rolling, spinning things. It's, it's already conceived it. So then I can start to get under it and do body rolls or just let it roll over me or just, you know, up there, right? Because, you know, and there's a little bit of getting over the fear of getting hit with it. But, you know, after 20 years of being hit in the face, you just don't, it doesn't scare you anymore. <laughs> okay. 
Um, if anybody has a question about anything, you know, we're, we're doing this live, so we can definitely move into some other area. Um, there was something I was going to do, though. Do you have a... You're doing okay? Okay, all right, so let's do one more exercise. Actually, this, this might work. Let's... You're not making contact in the right place. Yep, so to make contact in the right... Actually, let me put some more tossy music, and let's just, let's just take a little detour and talk about this right now. I'm going to turn the music way down so I can talk to you, but I want you to have, a, have something going on in the rhythm. You guys love this song, but this is just the first one that was available. So let's talk about these tosses, right? So if I freeze the hoop at any point, right? Like if I freeze it right now, this would be the northern arc, right? From one side of my hoop, this is the northern arc. This is the southern arc, right? The lower side here. To keep the hoop rolling, you want to engage the southern side or the, you know, the southern hemisphere, right? It's counterintuitive. You want to grab it up there. If you grab it up there, you can do that, but it will deaden the hoop. Unless you know how to compensate for it, it'll deaden the hoop. But if I catch here, it'll keep rolling, right? It's like a skater landing on the, the right spot of the ramp, right? And so when I'm throwing this up, I don't want to wait and get it up there. See what happens? What I want to do when I throw it up is push into the southern arc. So what does that mean? That means when I throw it up to catch it, to pass it again, I'm going to be staring at this part, not that part. Who cares what happens to that part? That part could go to heaven for all I care. This part is the part that I want to focus on, right? So as it goes up, I'm focused on the southern arc. I'm pushing into what would be the bottom half of the hoop, right? Now, if you hit the wrong corner, you can get by with that, but it's probably going to do what we call a swing break. If you hit the right corner, it's going to keep rolling. So this is me hitting the right corner. This is me if I hit the wrong corner. And it, what it does is it constant, it does this like instant reverse of the hoop almost, right? So here we are. I'm hitting the right corner, the correct corner, I should say. And this is if I hit the wrong corner. And you see how it sort of misses. There's nothing there there. Hey, there it is, Kimberly. Aw. Aw. I miss your face <laughs> and energy. <laughs> you were so supportive for so long. All right, so these are the tosses. And I'm trying to engage with the southern art. Now, there, of course, there's no rules in hooping. This is they're just conventions, right? Uh, let me bring this music up. This is kind of fun. Now, you know, since we're doing a one guy, one song, one, uh, excuse me, one technique, one ex song exercise, I'm going to throw a, a few more things in here, right? This would be, if I want to stall it, for those of you that are advanced, if I do want to, like, stall the hoop out of a toss, I can go get it on the northern arc, right? Boom. See what happened? You can do it on purpose, right? So instead of, I'm going to go get it up there, right? Boom. Right? But it, that stops it. Boom. Right? Whereas I'll show you the southern arc. If I show you the southern arc, well, you can just see it every time I hit this lower point right here. Boom. Now, if you really need a cheat sheet, I'll tell you. If you're spinning the hoop clockwise, right? If you're spinning the hoop clockwise, right? The sweet spot is going to be 7 to 8 o'clock. That's the sweet spot range, okay? And your mileage would be totally different if I'm over here and the hoop is spinning, you know, counterclockwise or to my left here. Then the sweet spot is 3 or 4 o'clock. Again, this is a clock. For those of you that aren't 30, they used to have these things with hands. Just a few. 
few other pointer swung tosses. Um, Tara, like, is just a natural mover, and she uses her legs a lot. But it should be emphasized that even on these tosses, if you bring any kind of life to the legs here, any kind of life, uh, it makes the toss so much more graceful, or it makes the catch so much more graceful, it makes the toss so much more powerful. This isn't too hoop half nerdy. This move we do right here, okay? This can be made into tosses. It practically is a toss. And when I go in, if you see it, I'm going in on the sweet spot, right? I'm, I'm going into that corner to make this move happen, right? Nice, nice. For those of you that can't read the comments on the live stream, uh, Jeffrey just said one thing also, when you release the hoop, whichever direction your fingers are pointing, that's where the hoop is going to go. Right, so we've already hooped to that song. Okay, wow, so we're, we're pretty much at the, uh, at the done time. Uh, you know, um, where's your energy level? Could you do a medium energy song? Okay, y'all, I, I think this might be fun. I just saw this, I haven't played this song. So uh, back when you would release hoop videos one at a time and it was a big deal, <laughs> I did a video to this song and it really helped me sell tickets <laughs> on my tour. Um, but it's a great song. It's back when dubstep was around, so it's a little dubby, but it's, it's, it's a great song to sort of listen to what they're saying and try to figure out what's going on. Uh, it's kind of a mystery song in that way. So I'm not going to talk during this song, but it, this is an upbeat song, but I think you'll have fun with it. And just hoop any way you want to. This is our free hoop. You've got to look at yourself and say, what am I doing? There's no reason to spend your life hanging here. There's no hanging around this house. There's no reason you should, <coughs> should continue to hide here. Uh, there's so much more. There's family and friends that have crossed over and have, you know, left this earthly plane and are awaiting you. There's no judgment. There's no eternal hell. There's no punishment. The punishment's what you're doing to yourself now. You're self-inflicting that punishment. What you need to do is come out of that hell. You need to take yourself out of your own self-created hell. You're in prison of your mind. And free yourself. And move on in your life journey and enjoy life. We want to help you do that. But you've got to, you've got to leave this behind. You've got to be willing to say, this isn't really what I want to do the rest of my life. I mean, aren't there things you like to see and do and experience? And wouldn't you like to get rid of the fear? You see, by moving on beyond from this place that you're bound, because that's you are, you're earth bound. By moving beyond, you'll experience love and peace. Fear, no more darkness, no more hiding. And you're forgiven. That's the message. There are spirits that are with me right now, and I ask that they show their light to you, that you can see it, that you can see them. And they mean you no harm, but they mean to help you. And they mean to help guide you to a place beyond here. Head out. Thank you for joining us. This is our free hoop. No more instruction. Oh, uh, thanks, Rachel.
don't know if you guys were hooping for that way back when, but when dubstep came around, we would do this thing called quaking. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, some of us anyway. Like, during the track, we would just, like, quake the hoop. That's like the sun, so far off. And you feel that light, that's warm. That's inviting. You get the picture. You wish that light were stronger and shining on you. Yeah, I want you to imagine that that light is getting stronger and stronger. And in that light, you feel warmth and you feel loved for the first time in a very long time. Nice, T. That crazy song. <laughs> He's, uh, I'm pretty sure, I don't know where that sample comes from. If you guys know where that sample comes from, let me know. Uh, but he's essentially exercising a, a demon. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, so we'll play uh, one just sort of super slow song for you guys to either stretch or chill out to or whatever. It was super slow. We're going to definitely take it down a notch. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Thank you to the commenters and non-commenters. If you're watching this on replay, make sure you're watching the HD version if you can hold off that long, because it's much, much better.
have a jam this Sunday. Huh. Maybe we should have a jam. I don't think we'll have a jam this Sunday. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Okay, if anybody's still here, we are going to have a jam. I do want to have a jam on Sunday. <laughs>